I know people on my side can hear my audio. They can hear your audio, but I don't think they can hear mine. There it is. All right. All right, everybody. Here's another uh, episode. Another episode of the Poker Suit with Mike and Jen. I'm going to kick it immediately over to my co-host, Mike, so he can give us the, uh, the rundown. Take it away, Mike. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the seventh edition episode. Seven. Jeez. Yeah, seven, right. <laughs> seven weeks we've been doing this of uh, tonight's episode of the uh, Pokey Stew with Mike and Jen and tonight with Tommy. Um, as always, we like to start our evening off with a small disclaimer that uh, everything that you're going to hear tonight is the opinions of myself, Jen, and Tommy tonight. None of us are employees of the Pokemon Company International, the Pokemon Game Freak, or any of those affiliated uh, agencies. Um, so especially tonight when we start talking about some of the doc. Yep, Mike just froze. In, uh, based upon our experiences and interactions with other organizers of varying uh, experience levels. Uh, so with that said, uh, welcome again to tonight's edition. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. As you can see on my overlay, and I'm sure as you can see on Mike's overlay, because I think he said he was going to put up the specials, we have a bunch of topics to discuss with you, and we're going to start right off with our daily specials, which is, as you know, if you've been tuning in, our news edition or our news section of the program. So we are 10, da is it 10 days. Is it really 10 days? Shit. I think I counted 10. 10 days away from this season's first international championship, uh, which is being held at the XL Center again in London. And Mike and I are not attending this year. We did attend the inaugural one last year, but we are not attending this year. Uh, but our friend Tommy down there of the silver foxed hair is attending. Uh, Tommy, you said you're uh, heading out next Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'm not ready, but you know, looking <laughs> forward to it. I mean, a lot of friends I haven't seen for a couple of months now. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just looking over at Tommy's uh, picture there, and he kind of reminds me of a silver-haired uh, young rendition of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Does if he Abe, not? If Abe Lincoln had a bottle of peroxide and some ice blue hair dye, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I can see Tommy's sport, and he's probably got a jump start on No Shave November. And this is my No Shave November. <laughs> As you can see, I've been working on that for for a while now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at growing a beard. So all I know right. a bunch of you out there are uh, heading out to London, and I hope that you all registered. Uh, because oh God, as yes. you are aware, registration has capped for London. Um, I don't know the exact number. I don't know if Pokemon publicized the exact number, but I understand it's quite a high number of attendants. Um, so hopefully all of you that are planning on going were able to register. I understand that there was a screenshot going around Twitter earlier today, I think, uh, that basically showed a response from TPCI uh, Europe that said if you were given a travel award or travel stipend of some kind that you should be contacting them if you were not able to register. So if right. you or someone you know or love is in that category, please have them submit a support <laughs> ticket at support.pokemon.com. <laughs> Yes, definitely follow that up, too. Even if you support a support ticket, we know the, the speed of lightning that they move sometimes. Well, uh, see we the, love you still. No, the, the, the European team is definitely <laughs> on it. I don't know how much more they're going to be on it this week because they obviously are about to go live with a the you know the hugest tournament of this season thus far. <laughs> the hugest. Just... I mean, it's the hugest tournament this season. What do you want me My to tell God. you? Stop it. Jen, um, the fifth grader. <laughs> I'm smarter than a fifth grader. Leave me alone. Mm. <laughs> that remains to be seen, huh, Mike? Is that what you're, you're yeah. insinuating Absolutely. over there? Absolutely. <gasps> anyway, Mike's got uh, Mike's got another topic down there, and I believe it's related to his midseason. Yeah, we just had our winter midseason here in Fort Wayne, uh, kind of the first weekend available to us uh, in the winter season. So those of you that were looking to start snowballing some points early for your BFLs, um, uh, we, we had that here in Fort Wayne. We had 24 Masters. We hit that magic sweet spot for uh, top eight getting points. So uh, that was awesome. And uh, Justin was on there. Um, he's actually in my chat room over here, Mr. I Magikarp himself. Uh, congratulations. Fantastic. 
Yeah, he was our uh, repeat winner from our last uh, midseason, oh, and I sweet. believe it was his. I think it was his third time overall winning this. Um, I think uh, before that was Jake, and then before that was uh, was Justin again. So uh, he's definitely racking up some points uh, at the midseasons here in Fort Wayne. Um, we actually had zero juniors this last time, uh, but we did manage to get um, <clears throat> uh, uh, nine nine uh, seniors which is actually pretty good and two two of our well, actually one two three of our seniors were from out of state we had the Maoris come up from texas uh all the way to indiana for mid-season cool. uh and then uh, uh quentin colon colon Col cologne cologne yeah Sorry. Quentin cologne i think butchered his name i apologize uh they drove all the way from from your neck of the woods uh to to start racking up some points as well oh and uh let's see justin's in my chat saying he's been to three mid seasons this season he's won all of them <laughs> uh, so that's <laughs> good on your brother and uh <laughs> he's actually he's actually three for four and wins at my mid season so nice. um so th three-time winner at mine and and uh so he's definitely on a roll so i know people in my area um <clears throat> Um, I've definitely been looking out uh, for Justin and uh, kind of trying to throw some text in there uh, um, to try to try to get around his his challenge and of particular interest too. This time um, he actually came into our top eight as number eight seed and uh, battled his way up from eight seed to to repeat win. So uh, he definitely earned uh, that brick this time. So uh, again, congratulations. Um, I'm really excited for that, and and now kind of kind of cruise through myself for um, Thanksgiving, um, watch everything happening unfold here, and then try to get my own kids here off to a couple mid season in the area, uh, try to get some points up uh, for the rest of the thing. I know Ohio's got some mid seasons coming up uh, this weekend. They're doing a couple, um, <clears throat> as well as the the whole Midwest area is kind of kind of well, as you know stacked in terms of event <laughs> opportunities. Um, <clears throat> So if you want to rack up some points uh, in this winter season, this it's kind of the place to be. So come on out and uh, grab a hotel and go hop into a couple places. Check Definitely. the uh, event locator for sure. Uh, yours got postponed, right? You got yep. pushed out to January? I, um, I just made the decision uh, to postpone my winter mid-season. We had initially scheduled it for Thanksgiving weekend to try and help everybody get their Melbourne points. Well... Sorry, but I am moving it to the first weekend of January, and I'm taking the next two months off. So yeah. that'll be ways, that'll be what's going on on uh, yeah. the Liberty that's... Garden side. Liberty Garden is going on hiatus until January. So... That's good for you, and uh, and I think it's also going to be kind of interesting too to to have the opportunity in in that area too to have. Um, uh, a nice mid season right early in the format you know it's it's going to be it's yeah. going to be huge right well i it's... think the last time that we went to uh the, well, i think it was the first pc we ran with the megas was yes. the first weekend of january if i remember correctly and i think we had 80 something players at that mid season not mid season it was a pc yeah. um we had a lot of people come out uh, it was i want to say it was like the day or two after new year's day i think it was january 2nd or 3rd something like that yeah. something like that we it's had like a, a we had a huge turnout we had a big stream so you know we'll definitely get the ball rolling for that uh soon ish um but like i said uh it, coupled with my taking a break from twitter and stepping back from the community I am also taking an organizing break, and Liberty Garden's going on hiatus until January. So, <laughs> everybody, you guys have enough tournaments coming up. Chuck's got a mid-season coming up. Um, I don't know what's going on out on Long Island. I'm sure Bob's going to be running some stuff. Uh, but you got London, you got Memphis, uh, San Jose. You know, there's there's enough tournaments going on that you guys will, you know. Keep it occupied. You'll have a good Thanksgiving, a good Christmas, and then we'll see you again in the new year. So, right. So, to Tommy, that. just kind of while we're on the topic of some of these uh, tournaments, so we're, how are you progressing in your road back to Worlds? Um, doing pretty good so far. I have a total of zero points on the first the first BFL of the season, so also a pretty good start. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I'm taking the, the regionals route so far. I've got two top 16s on my, my finish so far. There's only like two tournaments I've got in CP from this season, so... Like I'm okay with that. I'm I'm happy. It's a good start. It's pretty much about where I wanted to be. I wanted to get you know 
good chunk of points heading into London, so I can let like London be my decider on what how the rest of the season goes. So pretty happy so far, I guess. Yeah, you got some uh, tricks up your sleeve for London coming up. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, glad to hear that. I, I just wish I could be there. I'll be watching the stream. <laughs> I've got four auditions next week, okay? Monday and Tuesday, and then thir- uh, Saturday and Sunday, so. Yeah, that sounds brutal. I'd rather be in London right now. <laughs> I think we all would. Yeah. Amazing. All right. All right, so I think that does it for our daily specials. We can move straight oh, into yeah, our main here course. Here we go. <clears throat> so before we, right. I think before we start the main course, I'm going to put some links in the chat here. And uh, they're basically, so to, to give you a heads up on what I'm going to put in here, um, there's a program called WorkShare that I have access to at my job, and it basically will take a document, compare it to another document, and then show you the changes or the differences, I will say, the differences. So if you take a previous version of a document and compare it to your most recent version, it'll show you how that document's progressed. So what we've done is we've taken the document that we, the rules document we started with in January, that was the one that we had access to. So the rules document we started with January, I think it was January 31st, and c- ran a comparison to it, to the one that just came out on November 2nd. So I'm going to put that, um, it's called a red line. So I'm going to put that in the chat here so that you can see. Uh, let's see, create a link. Copy link and put it in the chat. And um, if you guys want to share it on to uh, Twitter, wherever you want to do, uh, that's cool. And uh, it's basically, like I said, it'll show you the changes. Now, this isn't the most recent old version of the document. Like I said, it's January, so there are things that were already in there that'll show up as new. Uh, but this was the only document that we had access to at when this we did point. The red line. Yeah. So if you want to follow along with us, you may want to open up that document. Um, I think the first thing to to talk about is the differences between the local distribution and QR code. Is that new or is that old? Well, before we even get into that, I just want to bring up the point that uh, if you go to, uh, if you just Google uh, Pokemon rules and resources or go to the rules and resources page on Pokemon.com, mm-hmm. uh, you'll notice that all of the rules documents have been updated. The general event rules, the term and operating procedures, the TCG penalty guidelines, the BGC uh, video game uh, rules, formats, and penalty guidelines, they all received a revision uh, as of November 2nd. Um, <clears throat> those of you that are on Verbank, uh, uh, Hey Fonte, or whatever they call it, I can't remember, I can never call it whatever. Um, it's the hey fonte verbank all that yeah I don't know all that know. uh there's been a lot of chatter about the different uh, rules changes and updates um some of which may or may not apply like the general rules document uh has a couple small things in there that are um mm-hmm. um uh, uh, that, that are kind of applicable. Um, but tonight we're going to focus in on the VGC rules, uh, formats and penalty guidelines that received a, a revision. Uh, there's a, we're going to hit uh, a couple of the broad sweeping changes. And um, yes, I know everybody's eagerly awaiting the discussion points on section 2.2. 2.2. <laughs> okay. but we're you like how that circle. worked out, right? We're going to circle back around to 2.2, okay? So, so We're going to make with you us. stick around until the end. <laughs> yeah, bear with us as we get through the other uh, kind of updates, and we'll circle back to 2.2 because that's probably going to consume most of our debate because uh, even amongst ourselves, we, we have some... Uh, um, Debates, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I've, been, about I've been playing a devil's advocate... <laughs> Uh, pretty much since this document came out, so yeah, more devil than advocate. <laughs> <that's for sure. laughs> um, so just just so that we don't, you know, think, you know, have the community thinking that Tommy's a mute. I, I I'd like to maybe uh, have him just kind of head jump, start our discussions with the general rules document. Uh, he 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 caught something as we were going through oh, yeah, it before right. we went live. Um, from the general rules document that he he found was kind of interesting based upon some some past personal experience. So Tommy, why don't you go ahead and share that with us? Yeah. So I was specifically looking at uh, section 10.10 in the general rules document, and it basically says that uh, once a match has begun, 
players may not refer to tournament standings or wait for other matches in progress to resolve before making the decision to concede or agree to an intentional draw. So, like, the main thing that this uh, really affects is, like, those games where you sit down, maybe it's, like, the last round of uh, Swiss, and you have, say, really, really bad resistance and you're playing a friend. And if I'm sitting there and, like, looking around the room and I see two of my guys just got up and I know they lost, and it's like, okay, I'll sit there and I'll happily throw to, like, one of my friends if I know I'm definitely not going to make cut because of it. But, uh, you know, like, technically in the rules now, that is not something you're allowed to do, and I don't think it's that much of a big deal. It's something that has come up in very, very small, uh, like, instances. But uh, the fact that it is in the rules now is really important to know, knowing that you can't do that anymore because that's something that you can get flagged on if you are able to catch that. So right. this is, the, I just put the, the red line up in our chat there. This is in t uh, section 10.1, conceding a match. It's the last sentence um, in section 10.1. So that's general rules. And as always, uh, the VGC rules aren't the only rules that we have to abide by. We have uh, many documents that apply to us, tournament operations, uh, general event rules, and a lot of times some of us will even go to the TCG rules documents to see how they're doing things in case there's kind of something that comes up that may or may not be covered exactly under our rules document, kind of see how TCG handles it if they have um, anything that uh, has a precedent. Um, I do want to mention that there um, is an omission from this version of the video game rules document, and that is the section that was in the penalty guidelines, or the old penalty guidelines that used to exist, um, on cheating. And so that section is not in our document. I believe that it's in the TCG document. It should be in our document. It applies to us, and we did actually use it to apply a penalty at Worlds. So I, I bring it up yeah. because sometimes we have to go to the other documents to um, to make sure that we're ruling on something correctly. So just because that cheating section isn't in our document does not mean that it doesn't apply to our players. You guys need to be, it, like Jim is saying in chat, you need to be well-versed in all of the documents. Yeah, so and that's kind of one of those really odd areas um if you go to the pokemon rules and resources i'm just kind of taking a quick look at it right now under the general information there's general event rules there's tcg rules and formats there's pokemon vg rules and formats keeps going through and then if you go down to judge and organizer resources um well actually you know what i take that back because before it used to just say um Pokemon penalty guidelines or something like that, but now it actually says right. Pokemon TCG penalty guidelines. So now it specifically cites out TCG, so I, that's something I didn't catch here recently. Mm -hmm. um, so our documents uh, don't specifically cover that particular section, so it, that's something that we probably need to give that feedback. I know we have already have, so we just need to circle back around and, and, and make sure TPCI gets that feedback from us. Um, but uh, you know, technically it's not in our penalty guidelines as a video game community. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it very much falls within um, some of the, the broader scope of uh, the general rules, I believe. I haven't looked at them recently, so I, I, I do need to circle back around. I don't think the general <laughs> rules has a section on cheating that was always in the penalty guidelines, and I do have the general rules in front of me. Um, yeah. It was always in the penalty guidelines, and that's why I brought it up. Just because something is missing from our rules document doesn't mean that it doesn't apply. It definitely does. Well, but here's, um, especially here's the thing. if it used to exist in our rules at some point and hasn't been superseded by anything else. But, but here's where it gets a little bit sticky, Jim, because before we had kind of our our, our, our rules document was kind of uh, growing, right? The the penalty guidelines used to I, I swear to god it used to say up just until penalty now guidelines. yes up until this week it just said penalty guidelines it didn't right. say tcg penalty guidelines so, so now that it says specifically trading card game penalty guidelines do those things that are in there can we apply them i would argue yes i would argue yes too but i would argue yes i i can play devil's advocate too Right. And say, hey, I mean, I, and Tommy, from your perspective, if I were to come down on you and apply something from the trading card penalty guidelines and say, hey, you're 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 not following this and I'm going to issue a game loss because of this. And it's in the TCG penalty guidelines document. 
how, how would you take that as a player? Um, if it's something that's been in the rules in the past, I think that it's something that's depending on the situation. Like, it, it truly really depends on what the circumstances. But as a player, you should be like we we know that we're responsible for what's in the BGC document and the general rules document. And right. if it's something that's not covered in either of those, and it's not something that has like a a history, something that we can base off that's happened in the past, then I'd argue that it's probably something that most players would probably get upset about. But again, it really depends on the situation, circumstance of what you're ruling on. Yeah, I, I think in the sense of you know cheating and some of the broader things, I think we can all agree that you know even if it's not officially in ours, um, it, it should be applied. I mean, I think we can all get behind that. But I think um, uh, again, it's it's. I'm kind of jumping the gun, but when we start talking about that 2.2 section, um, <clears throat> you know, somebody could 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 make the case, you know, um, um, for for not being applied, right? And but uh, one thing I will have to say, in, in defense of the Pokemon Company International, is uh, they've historically done a really good job of supporting judges and organizers at events when they 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 want to apply, you know, rules, penalties, guidelines, decisions. Um, so long as the organizer or judge can um, rationalize and, and talk through yes. how they how they reach that decision, yes. right? So even if the representative or representatives, depending upon the scale of the event, um, aren't they, they may not necessarily agree with you on a personal level of how you would actually apply something. Um, if you can rationalize with that that representative and say this is this is why I'm doing this and this is how I go through and this is what I think. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't think I've ever come across a, a particular instance where they were like, no, I don't like that, and um, I'm not going to support you, right? Um, I, I've always gotten that support. So that is something I, I can definitely get behind. Um, but like, like Tommy was saying, I, I guess it really does depend upon that situation where um, – uh, if it's not technically in the VGC rules doc or the general rules document, uh, we just need to make sure that there's a, a clear case for, for application until we can get our documents back up to speed um, with regards to some of those those areas. But, uh, yeah. No, so I definitely agree. And I think Tommy is right in the fact that if we're trying to apply something that has nothing to do with, with video game to, to, you know, from the TCG document, the players have every right to be, you know, angry about that because – that's just poor judging at that point. You know, you're trying to stretch the limits of imagination here. You know, yeah. you probably shouldn't be doing this. But if you're, you know, if you know cheating is something that we're supposed to be watching out for and penalizing, and you know that it's not in our document, and you know that it used to be in the penalty guidelines, um, it's something that you can feasibly apply to us, especially because cheating uh, applies across the board. Uh, there isn't, you know, yes, there is specific cheating when it comes to TCG and VG, but cheating is cheating is cheating. And so if yeah. at any point you think a player is is doing something on purpose, the cheating section of the document does say you need to go to the cheating section. Like the, if you think somebody is doing something intentionally, Move to the cheating section of the document. That's what it always said. And so, um, if you know, if you believe that someone um, has illicit notes from a previous round, or if yeah. someone has been tampering with a cartridge between rounds, or things like that, um, that's immediately falling under cheating. And so, yes, it's missing from our document, but yes, that kind of yeah. um, spirit and rule guideline still ap applies to what, you know, what we have to deal with. Yep. All right. So, All right. So I think we've... Just, just one thing really quick. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that's really important is that when you start diving into the, you know, the TCG rules document, you're, you're starting to lead into that section of like you know, judges interpreting rules specific ways. Right. I, I think that's something that's like a really, really big point about, you know, VG players reacting to certain rulings is when yeah. it's not specifically stated in a document it's it's interpret it's an interpretation of a specific rule that's not you know maybe not the exact way the rule was you know maybe meant to be perceived but it is an interpretation of the rule right. I, I think that's when most players have issues with how rulings happen is when it's a very twisted interpretation of specific rules Absolutely, yeah. i definitely agree with that um and i know that um people have tried to do that in the past um read way too into the way something's written or manipulate something to their own ends or whatever, you know, what have you. 
Um, but I think if you're, you know, if you're an upstanding judge and if you're honest about what you're trying to do and if you're clearing your ruling with, say, your head judge or your TPCI rep or your TO and getting that second and third opinion that Mike and I are always talking about collaborating with your fellow judges, you can definitely avoid that kind of a situation. If you're kind yeah. of just going rogue on your own, then maybe you have to step back and say, hey, is this the right thing to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but the All penalty right. the penalty section of the guidelines in the VG does have information about um, uh, you know interpreting rules and assigning penalties and deviating from recommended penalties. So I definitely recommend that everyone read those sections there just to understand the um, kind of the leeway that judges and organizers are giving yeah. when applying penalties. Make sure penalties. you read those documents. <laughs> Learn that part. All right. <laughs> All right, so let, let's let's kind of push forward here for a second, and let's let's dive back into the video game rules and formats document, um, and kind of start going through some of the the, the major things, and um, you know, starting with section one, and kind of you know anything of worth noting in, in section one. Um, the, the big thing for me in section one is the addition in section 1.4 and this is the one that we've all kind of been looking for mm -hmm. leading up to London yep. um, and and I quote uh, Pokemon may only use moves that have been learned through normal gameplay or from an official Pokemon event or promotion obtainable through a copy of Pokemon Sun or Pokemon Moon players may not use moves that are exclusively obtained through use of a copy of Pokemon Ultra Sun or Pokemon Ultra Moon. This okay. does not compute. Mm, does not compute. <laughs> it, what it um, basically says is you guys aren't getting a 17.5. Like, that's just it. Sorry about it. You know, like, move right. tutors, not legal if they right. exist. So which, this kind of comes back yeah. to what you guys were just talking about. Th this one has... It, no gray, no ambiguity mm -hmm. whatsoever, right? It just says, thou shalt not use stuff from Ultra Sun <laughs> and Ultra Moon. <laughs> Yay, verily, nomine pachi, filicu sancti, right? <laughs> so, so, there you have that one. I also want to point out there was uh, a couple of other additions to Section 1. Um, notably, in Section 1.1, a note that says, and now I'm going to quote, Event staff may alter a battle team to apply a penalty earned by a player. So that wasn't always listed in there, but it was always a uh, an, an addendum to the penalty in that section wherein if your team sheet doesn't match, yada, yada, we're allowed to remove a Pokemon. And then the counter argument was always like, well, it doesn't say that you're allowed to apply that as a penalty. Well, now it does. If your uh, battle team needs to uh, have a penalty applied to it, the event staff may alter it. Yeah. Um, and then there's another one that says any player found it, this is in section 1.2 under nicknames any player found to be in breach of the above rules during an event may be subject to penalties up to and including disqualification and that basically is immediately under the, f the phrase about inappropriate obscene or otherwise offensive words or phrases when naming trainers or Pokemon and so uh, yeah. it is now a penalty uh allowable by the rules document that if uh, your Pokemon or your trainer names are offensive or obscene or inappropriate, we are allowed to apply a penalty and most likely will then go back up to 1.1 and remove that Pokemon from your party. Yeah. Um, so that's section 1.1. That I mean, that's section 1. That's pretty, yeah. pretty uh, straightforward. Tommy, do you want to uh, chime in here about move tutors? What is the potential um, impact that that's going to cause moving through the, the end of the season? I mean, just for players that, you know, maybe new players coming into the games and maybe have Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, maybe trading moves back and forth. I think any veteran of the format, any veteran in the game will know that they're not allowed to use the new moves. I think most people wanted them, and it was an expectation that we were going to be able to use them. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think it's, a, like, a big deal because anybody who's playing, been playing the game for a long enough time will know that because it's in the rules, they're not going to be able to use it. They're not going to try and, you know, get the move to it or moves back in. And it's only for the last what month of the season, so it, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. There are some like like big like Pokemon that got some, would would get some boost from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but right. Well, that's that's more what I was thinking of. You know, how is that going to affect the potential meta shift as we come into London and you know wrapping up the end of the season? We're not getting these moves, and so 
right. we're not going to see a you know a, a meta shift. What what are the Pokemon that potentially would be getting a boost? Oh, Tapu Fini is uh, easily the number one Pokemon in my opinion because it gets um, access to Icy Wind, okay. which gives it like much needed speed control, allows Fini to be a much like easier support Pokemon. Uh, there's definitely a bunch of other mods that get stuff like Tailwind and Helping Hand mm -hmm. and a few things in that vein. But uh, overall, uh, it definitely changed some things. I mean, Hyper Voice was a big one back in 2014 when we finally got that. That moved Sylveon from basically no usage to like oh, yeah. top 20 usage immediately. Uh, I think it's less of a case this year just because there aren't as, there's a lot of good fairies, so it has to compete for a fairy slot on teams. But mm -hmm. um, that could have seen something been something that seems to play. Mostly it's like helping hands. Since right now there's very few Pokemon that actually get it. Stuff like Arcanine is like um, one of the very few mods that actually gets access to it. But with tutors, there's so many things that get access to it as well as um, there's probably some stuff that gets like uh, random moves like maybe uh, Earth Power, say Gastrodon, say right. mod that's needed that for the entire of the season. It hasn't had that, so uh, it's a few mods rise in viability. I don't think it would like instantly shift the uh you know the top 20 months and uses obviously there's probably like two or three months i would see like much greater usage just based on like being able to be used now but like overall i don't think it has terribly much of a impact that like i don't think it's gonna be that bad like okay. if, if we were gonna be able to get it but since we don't have it basically no meta shift whatsoever more the same basically everything we see in post worlds is gonna be more or less the same do you think anybody's going to have, I mean, kind of going off topic a little bit here, but kind of staying on the same tangent, do you think anybody's going to have any more tricks up their sleeve coming into London, or you think that we've kind of seen the extent of what people can do with what, what's available? I mean, we saw Worlds, and I don't think anybody really truly innovated at Worlds. We just saw a bunch of, like, very well-known teams, maybe a little bit um, better, better put together, but nothing, like, extreme, like, new and innovative, so... If we didn't see it at Worlds, and we haven't really been seeing it like post Worlds, like we've had a, a bunch of really cool teams like cut post Worlds, but not like any like big meta shifting teams, just like random little like one offs here and there that are like pretty cool, but nothing that would like like radically shift the format. Okay. So, with that in mind, I don't think like like London's gonna do anything else either. Well, John, who is making sure to point out that he's got tricks, so he's always got tricks, and usually it involves my favorite Pokemon Alakazam. So keep it up, John, who you're my favorite. <laughs> So um, I'm going to transition then on to section two equipment rules, hey. but we are going to skip. No, no, no. We're going to skip. We're going to skip 2.2. 2. Thank we'll skip you. Skip all the way to 2.7. down. No, because 2.1 talks about game cards. And I think we should lump game cards, hardware, oh. and firmware oh. stuff all together. That's a whole right. big ball of wax. All and right. Give up. It's, not, it's 935. All right. All right. So let's skip jump all the way to 2.7. Team lists. All right. Yay. The biggest note I've, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I noticed here in uh, 2.7 is they, they've kind of expanded upon the 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 wording that says required to pour, provide legal accurate list of Pokemon blah 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 and it says here are the things that you need to add you know species gender nature ability level all known moves hidden power you have to put down the things all stats and they list the stats. Some of that that wording was was missing before, right? You know, it was just right. thou, thou shalt fill out a a team sheet, and the well, wording that you on, see it was always on the bottom on of the, the team sheet. Yeah, sheet. Right. yeah. And because the team sheet is an official document, that kind of was always an official rule, but it was never in the rules document. Now it is in in a different now it's here form. So here. no longer can you play here. rules the rules jockey on us. You got to go by the rules. And there's really yeah. nothing new in here. It's It no, kind of clarifies that's... how to list the stats out, which is nice. Pokemon should be, uh, stats should be recorded at the native level. Well, there, there's one thing that's that's new in this whole team sheet section. section. Uh -oh. Mike's got his finger up. Yeah. Look right <laughs> below that. It talks about language. What language should be used to complete your team list? That's a whole new section. I did star one section on the bottom of that, and it says, at all other premier events, team lists must either be completed in the local language of the event or the language to which the game is being used by the player is set, or the game being used by the player is set. So if you have um, a North American game cartridge and a North American machine, but you decide to play in Japanese, you're allowed I to do that, and you would you can write your team sheet in Japanese. 
Um, your organizer may request, and we did this, I think at Worlds, actually, we requested mm -hmm. that some of the players uh, write two team sheets out, one in in English and then one in the native language that the, the game was in so that judges could verify um, in both languages. So uh, well, I had now... a Chinese team sheet last weekend. Um, I doesn't Does John do it or who is it that does? Ken. Um... Ken. Ken. Right, it's Ken. I don't yeah, know. He was I'm at looking my, over the. He was at my <laughs> midseason, and I sure, sure as heck had a uh, uh, Chinese team sheet, <laughs> and my uh, my awesome staff, uh, they they rolled with it, man. They 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 matched character for character, man. Fantastic. Ooh. That's uh, awesome. I don't envy them. <laughs> and, and then we had John and and Joe try to commentate when uh, Ken was on the stream machine, so it was <laughs> it was it was it was touch and go there for a while, but it was good. Um, so 2.7 is it's not a huge change. It's just the right. kind of the thing is they've, they've backed up the verbiage that's on the team sheet um, as well as uh, having the information about uh, languages that should be specified on your team sheet. All right. Skipping down to Section 3, mm -hmm. they finally define a full turn for us, which is nice. We've, I mean, we kind of defined a full turn um, in London, basically came to an agreement uh, signed off by mm -hmm. TPCI that... Uh, a full turn is when the run fight menu comes up or when you're presented with a choice to select moves, change out Pokemon, or run. Uh, they, they're calling that menu the run slash fight menu. And so section 3.2.2.1 uh, is brand new, and it's defining a full turn for when you get to things uh, like um, your match time limit. So when time is called and you have three turns remaining, the definition of a full turn is now in there, which is great. Is there anything above that, Mike, that you wanted to talk about? I think no, all I think of that is good. just kind of going over the same. Um, I will mention that the, the... Well, actually, you know, before we move on, though, in, 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 with regards to full turn, uh, since we have Tommy, Tommy, from a player's perspective, that definition of full turn seem reasonable to you? Yeah, I think it's pretty much everything that we've, you know, come to accept it to be. The only thing okay. that's a little bit, uh, I was like reading into, I was looking at, uh, it's when the run fight menu is to play for both players. So if one player has uh, already put in their, their moves and one player has not, so it's only on the screen for one of the two players, that's not considered a full turn then, if I understand that correctly. Yes, so if time is called and you're already on the run fight menu, and it should say... So, all right, so... If you're already on the run fight menu and time is called, that's turn zero. Right, but it's, they it's don't say that in here. Uh, it, yeah, I know. It, they're saying it, it should be... If time is I, called at any point in the current turn other than when the run fight menu is displayed, the current turn does not con con constitute a full turn. So it does say uh, if time is called at any other time when the run fight menu is is displayed... So if you're both on the run fight menu choosing moves, that should be turn zero, but it's not explicitly stated in here. But it kind of that second bullet point does kind of say if somebody's already right. locked in their moves and you're still choosing your moves and the timer, you know, timer is called, that's not a full turn. Right. Yeah, so I, I think what they're trying to refer to is not the fact that the run fight menus is displayed, but the action of it being brought up and displayed right. to you. So once it's up there and going, that's, you, the turn has already started. So even if both of you are staring at the run fight menu and you haven't locked in any moves, time is called, that still turns zero. So you, you finish out that turn, and then the next instant that that run fight menu comes up and is displayed, that is now turn one. Right. And then right. you go through three iterations for that. Yeah. I think maybe the language Sorry. could be clarified a little bit, but at least it's Just in, it's in there now, and yeah. uh, organizers and judges that um, that don't really network with everybody else can at least have that information. Right. Uh, there are a little bit of differences between events tethered by local distribution, which is the IR that you would get at, say, regionals, nationals, etc., and then events tethered by QR, which is like PCs and MSSs. Um, and that kind of comes down to how many Pokemon you have to have based on the way that the software is built. Um, and also there is a note in here under the Tethered by QR that players are prohibited from using the live competition feature to play friendly games in between rounds. Um, and that just basically comes down to we're only able to program in 30 matches or 30 games as it is. So if you go to an MSS that needs to go more than, I don't know, you know, 
five best of three rounds or whatever. You're cutting it kind of close if you want to start using your live competition to play between rounds. And so this is now saying you're not allowed to play in live competition between rounds at QR code tournaments. So that's a good yeah, that's thing. Not to, that's not to say that as an organizer, if I see you using live competition to have a friendly battle during lunch with your friends that I'm going to sit there and go, oh my gosh, and like DQ you. Um, but <laughs> <clears throat> if it gets to the point where you're like, Oh crap! I just made top eight, and I can't play any more games because I just played my thirtieth game. I'm gonna be sucks to be you. Right? <laughs> I mean, so. we're all gonna do that, and we're all gonna, we're all gonna laugh at you. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Okay, who wants to play live competitions with their friends, anyways? You can't even pick the music. <laughs> true that. True that. But uh, you know what? Hey. Somebody there is to. also a an added addendum note. I don't know if this is new or if this is old, but it does say players may use as much time as allowed <laughs> each turn. So I think that was in there before, wasn't it? Um, I don't know if that was in there before or if it was new, but the fact that it's in there now is is clarity for everyone who complains about stalling in VG. There are timers in game for a reason. Yes, we have an overarching round timer and there are reasons behind that but if your opponent wants to take all of their time all 45 seconds all 90 seconds all 10 minutes of their time to beat you they are allowed to do so according to the rules document now so whether that was there before um or now it's there now and we have to abide by it all right so, so the rest of the, the rest of section three is, is pretty much the same um, yeah that was same, all same, there. Same. But there are two things I kind of wanted to, to kind of touch on on section three. Make it um, quick. We got to get to 2.2. Who yeah, said that? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. But you're, you're, <laughs> Sorry. Shush. So there, there's one thing I wanted to point out was the, uh, where is it? It's in section 3.4.2. It says, if sudden death resolves in a tie during Swiss rounds, a tie is given for the match. So you can have ties, technically. In right? Swiss. In Swiss. How do okay. you get there? Sudden death tie. Du sudden death tie. How, yes. how does one do that, one might ask. Well, if we're in sudden death and we have a double game freeze, <laughs> and we tie. go to the double game freeze chart in our handy-dandy resident regulations, 3. and let's say, it's, let's say it's four mons to two. <laughs> Tommy's just hey. totally eye-rolling at us right now. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's four to two, and we have a double game freeze in our sudden death. Well, actually, we can't get to two to two, be four to two, because that would be sudden death. Somebody would be winning. Um, let's say it's four four double game freeze. No, that's that's a void. Uh, let's say it's two two. There you go. All right, wrap we it up, Mike. You're killing me. <laughs> Sorry. If we have two two, that's actually a tie in the double game freeze chart in sudden death, and we can actually have a tie for the match. Give the Sorry. people what they want. <laughs> All right. Who said so. That? The only other thing I wanted to touch on in this section is little Tommy input from a player's yeah. perspective. Uh, we checked a little bit before we went live, Tommy, about... Uh, so in this section, there are a bunch of tables that talk about uh, win-lose ties. That's fine. Ooh. And we, we all understand, you know, if I win two games out of three, you win, right? Um, but the table I'd like to talk about is at the very tail end of section three, 3.4.5, double game freeze. I was just referring to it. Um, <clears throat> this was new. These these tables were new in the latest edition, uh, edition of the rules document. So even though they're blue here, they, they were in here before. Right. Um, but since we've had them now for uh, Fort Wayne Regionals, uh, a couple other bigger events, we, we have kind of a precedence here about how to resolve these double game freezes. Um, I've heard mixed reviews from different players at different events regarding are, are these tables reflecting how these, these double game freezes should tie out. Um, like, for instance, um, the table shows a, a four to two uh, in the Pokemon count, and the resolution is listed as being a tie. And, and Tommy, I'd, I'd love to hear your input from a player's perspective, how you kind of view this table and, and where you like it and where you think it might be skewed. Well, I mean... <coughs> Like, before I say anything, I think it's very easy to say that it's going to be flawed in the sense that, it like, you, you can't have the rules document, like, clearly lay out how a situation would, like, work out. Because, like, there's there's many times where you can fall behind, you know, 4-2 and still, like, be in a very commanding position to win the game. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. Like, if you understand that it's very, very hard, if not impossible, to, like, 
put that in the rules and get that situation in the rules and then go back and look at this and say, well, does this do the best possible scenario if we can't get there? I think probably, yeah, it does. Like, 4-1 and one and 3-1 are very, like, commanding positions that you will almost always win the game if you get into that position with the right amount of mons left. Um, otherwise, it's like, you know, like these these smaller totals, like 2-2, 2-1, 1-1, like, these are games that often can go either way, so I think the ties there are very fair for the most part. The only one that, like, you could, like, argue that might result in a win would be, like, a 4-2, just because of how those situations, like, usually play out. But, you know, for the situations that sometimes do pop up with a 4-2 player is, the like, the winner of that situation is the player with two mons left. I think the tie is fair. Like, I, th- I think that the ties, all the tie uh, things on the chart are representative of games that can go either way. So those those 4-2 games still can go either way, depending on the situation. So I, I think with the overall mindset that it is flawed for just a fundamental reason, like, right. it's doing the best that it can possibly do, given what we okay. have. Right. No, that's definitely well, that's accurate. All right, cool. You ready? Is everybody ready? Buckle your seatbelts. Yeah. We're going to section 2.2. 2. <laughs> All right. We're just going to skip over the rest of the stuff because that's pretty much... Yeah. All right, good. Well, was, section 2 right. starts off with game cards, and it talks about how you, um, you're you responsible for ensuring that your game card is fully functional. Um, yes. Uh, there, you know, there's a situation, I think... Uh, that this might apply to um, in Canada where the the player had um, a non-functioning or a kind of wonky functioning uh, digital cartridge um, and so argued the fact that they couldn't be penalized because there was nothing in the rules about yada yada anyway so it you know it, it it's basically you want to make sure that everything that you're using game cartridge uh, d- DS, even your charger, you want to make sure that all of those things are fully functioning. Because, you know, when we were at London last year, we were having disconnects left and right. And we were, you know, trying to scramble to figure out what was causing all these game freezes and disconnects and everything like that. And there were a couple of things that came up. Maybe the system had been dropped too often. And so there was an issue with uh, the IR ports or maybe uh, the systems were running modded software. And so there was software running in the background that was draining the battery from the IR, and so the IR connection wasn't as strong on, like, the other machines. Uh, We thought maybe it was the connection between the old machines and the new 3DSs. Uh, There was a myriad of of issues, and so if if you show up to a tournament with a fully functioning DS and game cartridge, you're more than likely to not have any issues uh, with your your machine. So I think that's why that was added in there. getting two modded <laughs> modded DSs, uh, section 2.2 under game systems now says, and I will quote it verbatim, um, players should ensure, of course you're getting the popcorn, I hate him, he's getting the popcorn out, players should ensure that game systems with which they enter play Pokemon tournaments are unmodified. Players found to be using modified systems may be subject to disqualification and subsequent disciplinary action. So there's a few things wrong with this section. Number one, that is in game systems and not in game patches, updates, and firmware. And so game systems is hardware. And so this kind of falls under a hardware situation and this is why everybody was freaking out earlier when this came out about modded capture cards because game systems talks about your hardware in addition to obviously the the preloaded software and so there was always a section in the Pokemon um, rules about uh, using uh, legal DS's and so if you go to the Nintendo terms of service in your DS uh, box that you get when you buy your machine. Um, it does talk about how your you break your terms of service or you break your warranty if you mod the machine. Obviously, uh, that doesn't count. You know, if we're talking about putting stickers on it or hanging a charm off of it or replacing, I don't know if your you know your little circle pad falls off or something like that or whatever um, or if it's hanging on by a thread because you have to tape the dang thing together. Uh, We're talking about opening the machine up, 
fiddling with the guts to add in something, closing it back up, and now, ta-da, you can, ca you know, you can stream uh, to your, d you know, to your machine, um, or adding in software via a bunch of back doors, and voila, now you can um, take out your save file and put it on your computer and run all kinds of hinky stuff with it. I mean, we saw last year, we saw something that allowed you to see your opponent's stats um, while you were battling them live. And this is, th you know, this is the kind of stuff that Pokemon TPCI specifically has kind of been racking its brain on how they're supposed to handle. And so adding in something like this makes sense, but I don't agree with how it's been done. I don't think that the language in here is, is great. Um, I think that it leaves a lot open to interpretation. I don't like leaving things open to interpretation. Um, I mean, within reason. Granted, there are certain things that we, you know, we should be trusted to, you know, be educated on and, and, you know, figure out for ourselves as, you know, high-level judges. But when you're getting down to talking about modified systems, I want to say about maybe... 2% of the judge population understands exactly what that means or what they're looking for and either they've you know gone out of their way to get educated on these things or they just happen to know about them because you know they do or whatever the case may be but without any kind of um, guidance or official uh, rulings, you know, or, or training from TPCI, we're basically at the Wild West here, and now you're going to have judges going off the rails, exactly, going off the rails and kind of, I don't want to say witch hunt, but I want to say witch hunt, like, you know, somebody is going to, uh, you know, either they have a vendetta, or they think that somebody's cheating, or somebody's going to accuse somebody of cheating, and now we're looking through somebody's DS, and if you have no idea what you're looking at, how are you supposed to be able to figure out what a gen, you know, or I mean a, a modded DS is supposed to be. And so while I, I am all for the spirit of of <laughs> why this is in there, the the application of it I do not agree with at all. And I've been, like I said to m say earlier, I've been devil's advocating my ass off lately, letting people know that this covers capture cards. You should not bring your capture card excuse me, not bring your capture card to play with at a tournament. And then by extension, why should judges or TOs be allowed to use them to stream with? Because right. it, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And to be honest with you, it doesn't sit well with me that as a TO, I can stream with my modded capture card, but then DQ someone at my tournament, at the same tournament that I'm using that modded capture card, DQ someone for bringing that modded capture, that same brand of modded capture card, whether it be Loopy or Katsukitty, bringing it to play with at a tournament. I do not agree with the, the way that this is being implemented. Um, I don't think that we're going to get any kind of clarification on this at this point. And so Mike and I have talked to a couple of judges. Um, and basically what we think is the intention, and I think it's a noble intention, is the intention is that players should be playing with DSs out of the box. With no changes to it at all. And then... TOs are free to stream from their own capture card however they see necess th they, s they deem appropriate. Um, but I, I do want to issue a, a uh, um, I don't even know how to word it here. I want to, I just want to say something word here. Of caution. Yes. If you are going to stream with a capture card as a judge or a TO, please, for the love of Arceus, do not then penalize your players for showing up with a capture card, please. Yeah. Because if you are streaming, you're, you're using something that's not allowed in the rules for your players. And penalizing them for using something that you're using just isn't right. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. Um, if you have absolutely no idea what a modded DS looks like, please do not think that you're going to go out there and catch mm. somebody with one. Um, like, just let it be. If if you have to, leave that section as if it doesn't exist. Like, r like really, leave it to the experts. Um, 
I'm just going to go out, out on a limb here. Mike and I have talked about this. We're going to teach you guys about these things. It's coming. Yeah. <clears throat> so w one of the, I'm just going to kind of add on to, right? Um, so like Jen was saying, the, the intention is for us, uh, and, and as much as Jen doesn't like it, it for organizers and 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 judges to be able to continue to stream because I I, I, I believe that it is the the Pokemon Company International TPCI organized plays perspective that um, if we've been granted the ability to judge and to host events and organize these events that we should be held to a higher standard of accountability and fairness that if we do have a capture card we're okay it's legit right um, where it becomes a little a slippery slope, and, and I, I know if you, based upon our discussions with um, um, uh, other, organizers uh, and judges. other organizers and judges, that they, 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 we keep talking about the distinction between the difference between an organizer bringing a DS for streaming to an event vice a player bringing a DS for their exclusive use during the event. Now, where it gets a little bit sticky is in the rules document itself. Mm -hmm. uh, which which section was that, Jen? It was the end of three. It's the end, end of, of two. the end of two point three, and I have this exclamation point yeah. several times. So tournament it, regulations are tethered to a player's registered game card, not to the console. If a player chooses to put their game into a new console, they are responsible for ensuring that this console also follows the above requirements end of section 2.3 so basically if I'm a player and I go to your tournament and you're asking me to be on your stream that section is now applying to me and all of a sudden this capture card is mine and I can be penalized for it <laughs> like now, the, 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 one, the, one, the one caveat to that whole section is if a player chooses to put their game into a new console right but as an organizer we always say you don't have a choice right Exactly. I, you, ex I tell you. Exactly. Thank you. If you're going to be streamed, you have no choice. You're going to get a loss for not sitting for that round. So you right. have no choice. You have right. no choice. But 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 that sentence says if you choose to, right? But as a player, if you didn't choose to, then this rule doesn't apply to you because you didn't choose to put it in there. You were told to put it in there. So it, it, this is right. This is but where it's bandying about where, words. No, no, no. I know. Th th and that's that's where th the wording of this can be taken in so many different ways. I, I think, and, and Jen, you can agree with me. I I know you're playing devil's advocate, and you're and you're, um, you're 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 you're, uh, you're playing devil's advocate oh, really hard. I and I appreciate that because th there's a lot of <laughs> lot of things in there. Um, that Mike just froze. Actually. I and, and Mike you just say, froze. Start over. Okay. Is it, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so even even if you are, you know, somebody has a modded DS or they, you know, they're putting it into the stream DS that you brought as an organizer, um, it, it it comes all the way back to the actual thing that says players may receive a penalty, right? So, again, it comes right back to the right. organizers and the judges whether or not to actually impose a penalty, right? Yes. And, and that's, that, yes. that's like, we, like you were saying is if, like my midseason last weekend, we streamed it. Had a great time. Um, we did some cool things with it. Um, the people that tuned in, I think, uh, enjoyed it. Um, I was using a, a 3DS with a loopy capture card, right? Um, I did not go through and look for people using capture cards or other modifications, right? The, the, the way we've kind of well, at least I've embraced it and, and pushing forward and, and based upon our conversations with other organizers and judges um, is th I, I've kind of went, you're playing devil's advocate and I, I kind of jumped over into, I'm just going to embrace it for the, what I perceive the intent is and, mm -hmm. and until it told otherwise um, that for me, it's pretty much a, a, a status quo. Uh, the state of what we have right now pushing forward in terms of streaming capture cards, etc. cetera. Um, I know there are players that show up to many events and they, they have a capture card, right? Because that's the only DS that they have. They stream right. on their own right. or in between matches, since they can't save every battle video, they'll replay that battle video and capture it, right? And record yep. it back. So yep. they have it. totally cool with that, right? Where I see this rule providing for us now is a flexibility as an organizer and as a judge that 
if for some reason um, there is a problem with, with the player's DS, um, whether it's a hacking thing or a connection issue or or anything, right? You know, maybe that loopy card is, is fritzing out and it's causing disconnects. Right. I, I don't know. But what this now allows me to do as an organizer is to have something that I can reference back to to apply a penalty if I need to. Um, and now I'm going to jump a little bit over onto your side, though, Jen, is because where I do have concerns, even though I look at this as that as an intent and, and what I think you and I, you know, when we, we, we chat privately, you know, we, we can see through some of this intent, right? And a lot of the, the good organizers um, that are out there can, can see the intent for what it is. Um, the issue becomes if, if I read this by letter of the document, um, organizers, like you said, that might have a vindictive um, bone or they have an agenda against a player or a set of players. Um, Those Verlicify fanboys that want to catch all the cheaters. Yeah, you can really – somebody could just run amok, and, and, and that's, that's the difficult part. And um, uh, until that happens, I would – I hope – and pray that our friends in TPCI would, um, you know, come down swiftly, you know, upon the, the back of Snorlax and the pulverizing pancake with the red glowing <laughs> eyes upon, <laughs> upon those judges and organizers that, you know, uh, you know, if they catch wind of saying, you know, Hey, Mike was over there in Fort Wayne and anybody that showed up with a little, a, a, a charm stuck to their thing or they downloaded a, uh, you know, a themed backdrop to their home screen or their DS, you treat it as a modified system and he said, you're out of here, right? I would hope that the TPCI would come down upon those judges and organizers and say, hey, that, that that's not what this is for. You're out of control. You're out of line. Um, and, and even if they did that, though, that, you know, sometimes it's almost too late, right? Um, and... Um, I, I'm, I am not a player, um, as evidenced by the Halloween stream and my inability to, <laughs> to do anything really well. Um, but Tommy, I, you know, what, what's kind of the general feel from the player community and the word on the street with regards to how this, this rule impacts, I mean, are, are players kind of like, oh crap, what are we going to do now? Or are most players just kind of like, well, it doesn't really affect me. So I'm not really too concerned. Well, there is a a good chunk of community that does have those capture cards and only those capture cards. And I think they are pretty much all, you know, fearing that they're not going to be able to like, you know, go to tournaments until they get another DS, which is something that sucks. I know a bunch of players have already gotten out and gone to get new DS is just because the only cards they had were the, the capture card DSs. So yeah. I know that is a safe move though. All right. Yeah. You like know, yeah. Out. I yeah. think at this point you have to, I don't think there's any way around that. Like you don't know, like, you don't know going to your event if you go in with a capture card, you, you're, you're risking getting DQ'd by entering the tournament with that. So I think at that point, you just have to go out and get a new one. Like, with regards to, like, you know, streaming, I think that, I've said it before, I love you guys, but we hate judge discretion. We like things to be black and white in the rules. Let, let, let me see it how it is and then go from there. Yeah. I think of this, like, knowing that, you know, we want streaming, it's something that we very, very much want. It's something that we have to leave up to judge discretion and just hope that it's not going to be used for malicious intents. Mm -hmm. And as long as it stays that way, shouldn't be a problem in the community, but it just takes one, you know, rogue judge to go out and, you know, mess it up for everyone else before we get a big problem on our hands. I think so, so my biggest concern here is, and this is something that going back a couple of weeks where we were having a big discussion about casual players and the bar for entry into, you know, into competitive Pokemon, um, is that so many of the casual community plays on a modded DS for whatever reason, you know, whether like Tommy said, it's their only, it's their only unit because they can only afford one unit and they stream or you know they 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 mod their their Pokemon say for singles or or whatever you know obviously they have legal Pokemon for for you know tournaments but they mod their Pokemon for you know singles or whatever. Um, these people are now going to come to these tournaments. They may not be as well versed in the rules or in the the trends of what's going on in our community as we are, um, and then they may come up against a a judge or a TO that 
is going to take a hard line on on this new on this new bullet point and now this person who was really excited about coming into a new community is going to get their first DQ or their first penalty and now they're going to say well I'm not buying a new DS for this like uh, forget it you know like I'm just going to go back to playing singles or whatever or, you know I'll go play Overwatch or something you know so I think um I think the the I would really hope that the judges and the TOs out there would just kind of pretend that this section doesn't, or this, not this section, this bullet point doesn't exist until they need to apply it in the event of like, like Mike was saying, like a, a continual disconnect, something that's causing an issue or, right. you know, or say, you know, you are standing behind someone and you can, you can see there's something wrong with their machine because while they're battling, they can see their opponent's stats and you know that that's not, a po you know, something possible, whatever. Um, but like I said before, Mike and I are actually planning on doing a stream on the ins and outs of modding your machine and what it looks like and all that, um, all that stuff, so... Uh, definitely not approved by any kind of official channel, uh, but we're so concerned about this section that we want to make sure that uh, judges out there can see what these things look yeah. like so that they're a little bit more educated um, on, yeah. on them. So let's, um, I, I want to take an opportunity right here to kind of summarize kind of this conversation right you know a little heart-shaped box and put a little bow on it <laughs> little heart-shaped box <laughs> yeah all right so first of all let's, let's kind of address a little bit uh, from tommy's concern right you know the the desire to have this black and white one of the problems that we have in, in writing rules documents and as like you said is you, you can't capture everything right and, and and everybody knows that right so you make the best effort that you can so you try to make it as unambiguous as you can but the rules document just just can't, especially with things evolving, right? As as technology evolves, as as exploits are, are exposed, and um, uh, you, you try to make a document that is flexible enough to provide some teeth uh, to the organizers uh, and judges, um, while trying to encompass potential scenarios that arise, right? So, but again, that that does put some discretion and some intent. Um, sort of some judgment call into judges, right? So and that's what we're there. We're, we're judges. Um, so we do our best and we try to share community thoughts and try to share best practices and, and move forward with that. With that being said, um, I kind of like to summarize, even though we have some varying concerns regarding the, the wording of these, this particular section, kind of our, our consensus amongst the judges and organizers that we've talked to thus far the intent for this section is, in fact, to cover those situations that have yet to really kind of really rear their ugly heads, right? It's not intended to shut us down from a streaming perspective. It's not intended to give judges out there the, the ability just to go, I spy a loopy card, DQ, uh, or, you know, <laughs> why did you put the extended battery pack on your DS? DQ, right? <laughs> that's That's not what it's there for, right? So the intention is, is for us to be able to, if we run into a situation where a modification of a 3DS um, is, is such that it's like, whoa, you know, you're responsible for a good 3DS, this thing is hosed, or you've modified it in such a way that it's, it's become... <laughs> hosed? What's wrong with hosed? It's hilarious. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm old. No, I like um, it. Um, such that... Um, you, you know, uh, it, it gives us the ability to then point to something so that we could apply a penalty if we deem necessary. And yeah. and like I said, that's kind of why at my midseason, I still had my stream. Um, if somebody had a a loopy card, I wasn't going to press any kind of issues with it, unless it becomes an issue, right? And if it becomes an issue, then I can reference back to that that document and say. It says right here, you're responsible for it. You've made some modifications. It's causing us some troubles. I'm going to apply some penalties. And depending upon the severity of the issue, whether or not it could be resolved or fixed or replaced, I might start at awarding or game loss. Um, you know, maybe the loopy capture card is just rattling around, is making a loose connection, and it's causing disconnects. Um, we've resolved them, um, but it's an irritant and it's causing a delay in my, my tournament. I may issue a warning and say, look, next round, you need a new device. And if you right. can't, bring a new device and I have to deal with this again, I'm going to raise it to a game loss. And if it 
keeps going, I'll go from game loss to an eventual DQ. Um, so it just provides some substance behind uh, what we're trying to do. Um, now, with all that being said, the, the, the concern, and, and Jen's done a really great job of bringing up that concern and, and how we can go off on the deep end sometimes, um, is the way it's written. It does, since it is, you know, broad in that sense, um, somebody taking a strict, strict interpretation, not a strict interpretation, <laughs> um, a strict interpretation hey <laughs> with, a, with a vendetta um, <laughs> could... I missed it. I totally you missed totally it. You totally missed it. You missed it. Was Tommy stripping? Yes. We'll, we'll worry about after hours, Mike. <laughs> hey, stay tuned after Stay the tuned for the for... after stream. That's right. The nightcap. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but but seriously, the, 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 that intent of, of that is not to stop streaming. It's not right. to go on a witch hunt. Um, so... The, the general feel and consensus is that we should continue to do our grassroots streams, grow this community, get the streams out there. Um, but like Tommy said, if, if you're in doubt and you have the means, you know, sure, get another 3DS, borrow somebody's for the weekend. Don't don't put yourself in that position, right? And like I um, mentioned it, before, I urge all judges, if you are going to stream, I mean, when this first came out, I was like, well, that's it. We can't stream anymore. Um, but after d discussing it with the judges, I've come to the conclusion, like Mike said, I'm going to continue streaming, but I will not be penalizing players if they right. have no other option but a capture card. So Absolutely. I urge judges and TOs out there um, to to kind of follow suit along with us. We're not the end-all, be-all. We're not employed by Pokemon. We're not officially <laughs> sanctioned. We are just two judges, and Tommy over there is a player. We're just two people, three people, giving you our opinions, but we're hoping that uh, with our experience and with the judges that we interact with, um, you guys will kind of say, hey, this makes sense. I'm going to follow along. I'll continue my stream, and I'm going to kind of, you know, err on the side of caution when it comes to the modded DSs. Yeah. So please, yeah. for the love of Arceus, let the yeah. people play. Yeah, let's 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 continue to do what we've been doing so well, right? And and trying to help grow stream, provide that 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 venue, that forum for sharing, collaboration, um, and just straight up entertainment, right? And you know, I know when the rules dro uh, document dropped, there was like mass hysteria. It was like world of worlds, <laughs> Orson, dogs you know, Orson and cats Wells. living together. Ah, uh, that's right. Orson Welles, you know, you know, people were tuning in and freaking out, running to the store, buying loaves of bread. Um, <laughs> I, I think we've 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 come a couple of days. What's it's now the seventh, so it's, we're five days past, you know, this release of this document. Lots of good discussions, um, and I, I think we're kind of. Everything's kind of the dust kind of settled, and and I think we can all kind of come to the conclusion that, all right, let's let's continue to do what we're going to do, and just look at this rule as an opportunity to provide some kind of teeth, so that there is some kind of mechanical issue with the hardware, like like for instance, oh my God, what was the was that uh, U.S. Internet's or was it Worlds where the dude had the DS that when you opened it, like the, all the hinges were broken. So like the only thing holding the top screen to the bottom screen was the ribbon cord. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah, I it remember was like, that. Hey, come get a hack check, and you start to open it. You go, Oh and my it god! It flopped open. Yeah. It flops open, and you're like, I don't want to touch this because that thing is gonna rip in half. And what's he gonna do? And I'm like, Oh my god! Right. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that I think this particular rule covers. Is like, look, your DS is in such a state of disrepair that even though you can't really call it a mod, I mean, it's not It's not, not, it's not a purposeful mod. You've dropped this thing so yeah. often it's been abused. It's a gravity <laughs> mod, right? So... <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, Mike. So, but, but that's, this is the kind of domain where you're like, look, get a new DS, or the next round you show up, you're getting a game loss, and then after that, if you still don't have another DS to play with the rest of the tournament... You're you're out of here because th this stuff is not going to fly, right? But... Tommy, um, did we miss anything that you may want to bring up from this section, or do you think? Um, no, no, it's it's just that you know from the player side, like you know we we expect, you know, of our judges as well as you guys expect of us. And the one thing that I can say from this rule that we expect from the judges is that if you're going to make any sort of ruling, make sure you're educated and make sure you know <laughs> what you're talking about. Because as long as 
as long as you're knowledgeable of the situation and how like how these systems work and you're able to you know talk the player through it if you are going to rule on it all means but if if you don't don't go out there and go rogue and which hunt like you said like you said it before i'm just echoing but i'm just, like make sure you're informed before you make any decisions right yeah right don't be ignorant <laughs> You know, nobody likes uh, when when you know the the players come to Twitter and and complain about a judge or an organizer um, who you know is kind of following you know their own what what have you you know or interpreting the rules the, uh, against the way that that everyone else is kind of doing it, like not following suit with what everybody else is doing. So, you know, I would just urge everyone. Um, kind of reach out to your local judges, TOs, give us, uh, you know, give us, drop us a message to see, you know, if maybe you're thinking along the right lines or however you want to handle it. Um, but definitely this is a situation where we kind of need to be on the same page here. And Absolutely. At, yeah. th at this point, we can't expect there to be an official statement um, because this is kind of. Um, I think it's been a long time coming with the with the mod situation for TPCI to kind of take a stand and put it in the rules. And so I think this is kind of the most that we're going to get right now until that they can, I guess, go through. I'm going to say go through legal, you know, because this seems like a legalese kind of worded statement, you know, that covers them but still gives us flexibility um, so I think any clarification, if there will be, which I don't think there will be, will be a long Probably time not. coming. So it's yeah. kind of, this is our interpretation of it. We're not official. We're not even, like, sanctioned. But we're hoping everybody else will kind of look at our interpretation and say, hey, those guys know what they're talking about. We're going to follow along. So that's 2.2 in a nutshell or out of the nutshell and into Mike's popcorn bag. Help, help, I'm in a nutshell. <laughs> help, I'm in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, as Austin like Powers that. reference, you guys are too young. All right, Tommy, anything you else you want to cover? No, New I'm rules good. document from the other document, <laughs> from anything that you want to talk about from the player perspective, not even related to this? No, I think we covered it for the most part. I think a lot of things that people were looking forward to, like, looking for answers on we got you know at least talked about so um i think that's all covered you know for uh you no know, 17.5 was one of the big things going into london that everyone was worried about yeah. um yeah and just looking for more clarification on the, on the what's currently out there we want more clarification always no matter what oh, no, no matter what the situation yeah. we always want more clarification and, and, but, yeah. and i think i, I think we're going to see um, with every revision that comes out, uh, more clarity, more more revision, more refinement to to what we have. Because, I mean, as anything is, you know, like Jen, you pointed out a couple episodes ago, the TCG documents have had years to to kind of oh, yeah. evolve, grow, oh, and, yeah. and, and it's it's lessons learned. Like, hey, I know that the the best way to rip a bandaid off is not to go really slowly, right? In <laughs> You know, just yank it off, right? So that lessons learned over the years that they get incorporated into to, to documents instead of this tribal knowledge. Um, so I think we're going to see more and more of that creep its way back into these documents as we as we grow this as right. as we push forward. Right, and I will say uh, as as out as outspoken as I have been about uh, my displeasure with Section Two Point Two. The, the trend of the rules document has been a really positive one. There's been a lot of additions to it that were much needed, a lot of changes to it, uh, a lot of clarity edited in, and um, I think that the overall trend for the document is definitely a, an upswing or a positive one. Um, so, you know, we'll take, it, we'll take it as it comes and we'll interpret it how we need to, um, but... I, you know, TPCI is definitely, I think, on the right track with most of what's been going on. They're adding a lot of more staff, um, both sides of the, you know, the London team or the, the Europe team and then the, the Seattle team. They're expanding. Um, so I think it's, it's just going to get better. Um, and then hopefully when we come into the changes for Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, uh, we have a lot more um, of a positive um, document to work with. And absolutely 
you know, we'll be here. We'll we'll be here to walk it through. We'll hold your hand and cross the street That's together. Right. <laughs> Speaking of Ultra hand, Sun and Ultra Moon, that's coming out next week. Am I right? Next week? Is Two weeks, week? isn't it? No, it's next week. Next Friday. Is it next week? Oh, my God. Because London is next week, London's right? Next, yeah. Oh, that's right. I, I need to go the pay calendar. for those. <laughs> I need to go pay for those. I think I put them out on Amazon. Yeah, they come out next, next Friday. Uh. So... My wallet. <laughs> I don't remember if I bought one already. Oh, That's geez, not good. Tommy, good job. I gotta start. I gotta start my I bought, emails. I bought two of those two game packs. I bought from GameStop. something oh, on. I bought something on uh, Amazon. I think I gotta make sure that the credit card that's attached to it is actually gonna be able to be shown. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. but so now as you can tell, we're, we're already up. in dessert. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're already there. We're just talking about the game's Sun, coming Moon. out next week. We're really excited. I'm just gonna end up playing. So Ian has two auditions next Saturday and Sunday, like I mentioned. Um, so you guys are gonna be having a great time, or at least Tommy's gonna be having a great time in London. I'm gonna be sitting at high schools while Ian plays his tuba, and I'm gonna be playing Ultra Moon. <laughs> I'm going to so be that mom think, posted up in the corner. Do you think people are going to be playing uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon in between all their matches in London? Mm, yeah, probably. Casuals, yes. Casuals, most, yes. Most of the rest, no. <laughs> really? Just be focused? Yeah, like... Y- like a shark see- with laser beams on their freaking foreheads? <laughs> right. Like, there, there's very few players that actually, you know, like, you play the game in the rounds. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, points caught off for Australia is one of the other things that uh, Mike put up there. Uh, I believe that is the week of Thanksgiving or the week yeah. after Thanksgiving, right? Because uh, the points from San Jose it's, should count, right? It's uh, November 31st, I believe, is the last one. Okay. Day. Okay. So 30, my, 30, my midseason yeah. would have counted towards that. Sorry, Northeast. It is not going to now. Uh, you'll have to get your Melbourne points somewhere else, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. We'll be Com- here. We'll be here next Tuesday, Mike. What are we talking about next Tuesday, anyway? I don't think we've decided yet. Uh. Uh. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many uh, things. We to... What's that? You talk about me. Talk we could definitely you. talk. I mean, we could bring Tommy back on and talk Shy about the meta things. for for London if you want. What we what we really need in to general. Do. How we, should... I am. we we just need to collect like a collection of Tommy pictures over the years and his different hair colors. <laughs> There, there's some pretty scary uh, Tommy pics from what, what was it, 2015 when I had the full long hair. Oh my Remember god! That? Yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. I, I had long hair, Mike. Uh, there's a picture of me at 2015 Nationals holding up my two copies of Pokemon Art Academy, and I look like a full on like. Oh my god! Person. I remember that you caveman. <laughs> Like, back in 2015, I was playing in those 128-man pods at Nationals, the Win 3DS tournaments. There was one on both Saturday and Sunday, and I played in them both, and I made it all the way to the finals of both of them and lost in finals. And the second-place prize, because the first-place prize was the 3DS, the second-place prize was a copy of Pokemon Art Academy. (laughs) <laughs> and I got second both times, so I won two copies of Pokemon Art Academy. And that's a very, very famous forbidden picture. <laughs> Jesus. Um, coming up, I, I I don't know when we've got it scheduled, but not this week. So the week after London, we'll have, and he's in the channel, Sir Snorlaxion on. That's um, Armand from South Africa. He's going to be your master's head judge in London. He's going to be on the Tuesday following London to kind of give us a wrap-up on London and hopefully a boring recount of all of the non-issues that happened because we want London to go smoothly for him and not be London from last year, which I still have nightmares about. Absolutely. God, no. No. Anyway, yeah. L- London last year had all kinds of issues, and we're, we're really pulling for, for Armand to have a, a phenomenal uh, head judge experience and for all of you to have that too. Um following that i think mike the following week so armand's gonna be on the 21st i think the 28th we're gonna have the the queens of video game uh june and nikki or as as we call them junicky uh they're gonna kind of give us a a history lesson as it were they're going to talk about um the the start of competitive vgc and and how it's it's gone from there 
Um, and we're really excited to have them on. Uh, Junicki have been the leads on Nats and Worlds for video games since, since the dawn competitive. Of time. Yeah, since competitive has started. Um, so I'm hoping that um, judges and players alike will come out for that because there's a lot yeah. of cool and, stories there. And with that, if you guys, since we have a little bit of lead up to that, um, if you have topics or questions that you would love to hear June, Nikki uh, address or talk about or share with you, um, shoot them our way. Uh, we'll, Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll work them into our discussion with uh, June and Nikki. So like if you just wanted to know, uh, you know, from their favorite Pokemon to what they like to eat in the, for, on their cereal, you know, do they put their milk in the bowl first or the cereal in the bowl first? <laughs> Oh, oh. Please do not oh, no, do not ask not doing about doing that. This. We're not doing we're not that doing discussion. <laughs> no. Um, later on uh, in the month, I think is pizza, when we're gonna pineapple. do our. Um, I'm just gonna come out and say it. We're gonna do a a, a poke stew on hacking. So um, yeah. So Jen and Mike <laughs> and a special guest who will remain unnamed at this juncture. Uh, we'll be uh, going on a a school. What is it? The magical school bus. We're gonna go on the magic school bus to the the wonderful land of PK hex and hacking and mods and things like that. Yes, I just said that word. Uh, I mean, I already dropped the Verlicify word today, so I might as well just. Uh, talk I about said it PK again. Hex. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably gonna happen. I think Mike, we said sometime in December. We're going to hit that one. I, th I think that's what we're kind of shooting for. It just kind of depends on how the, the stars and the line, uh, align, right? Yeah, how the stars align. Um, and I think uh, once the rules document drops, depending on when that, cap when that happens, we'll have, another, uh, we'll have another session. Tom, you want to come back for that one? Sure. All right, fantastic. I like it. <laughs> he sounds so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I just got a text from Mom telling me when to come on. I'm like, uh, all right, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, TJ is reminding us of the uh, the the global link uh, maintenance um, yes. that is going down soon. I believe that goes down Thursday or Friday. Friday. So if you have a tournament in the next few weeks, you definitely want to get on there and do a QR code for it, so that you do not miss out on running your uh, your tournament with a QR code and potentially getting in trouble from Team CI. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is uh, Thursday night in the U.S. The uh, Pokemon Global Link's going down, so if you're an organizer or a judge that's running a tournament in the next few weeks, get your QR code in there now, kitties. So, I think that's it. All right. We anything else? We're good? Oh. That was a lot. We covered a lot. You guys feeling okay? You all right? Mike, you need some yeah. more popcorn? I had popcorn. It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I behaved tonight. I didn't get mean. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we've kept everybody uh, long enough. So, yeah, this is our uh, longest stream so far, so thank you well, for sticking with us. Some interesting topics. And uh, so everybody be good to each other. Take these rules, go forth and do great things. Continue to, <laughs> to stream. Continue to be good to one another. Be uh, excellent to each but other. Just, and... But just, just know that you have the ability to to do things now, okay? So with great power comes great responsibility. And party on, dudes. <laughs> Use your 280 characters wisely. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not on Twitter anymore. I heard that the it, it's, Twitter it's is a nasty, a nasty thing right now. So well, thank oh, you for tuning in, everyone. Um, we'll see you on Tuesday with a topic of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a See good night, later. everyone. Bye. Out here. <laughs>